purple tip butterfly. All right, let's get started. Um, I am going to turn my camera around and it will shake for a few seconds just to warn you. Okay. Hi everyone. Good morning. Okay, um, it's not focusing. Oh, there we go. Okay. Hi, good morning. How is everyone today? All right, so there, there is an outline of this butterfly in the description of the video that you can download and transfer on, onto your watercolor paper. And I also linked a link in the description um, of photos of this purple tip butterfly. Hi everyone. Hi Allison, hi Sydney, good morning. Joyce, Galetta, Desiree. Good morning. Okay, um, so I think the first thing we will do is we will paint in the purple areas first. And, oh, I let me go over my supplies. So I am using cold press watercolor paper from Arches. And, hold on, let me straighten up my camera. Okay. And I'm using, I'm going to be using my Princeton Neptune brushes. So I will probably use this size 12 round brush, size eight round brush, a uh, size four, size zero, and probably this liner brush here. And my colors that I'll be using is Windsor Newton for the purple. Um, it's called Clinacodone Violet. And I will pro probably be using this Chinese White. I think that's what this is called from Windsor Newton. And I might also add a little bit of, a little bit of pink in the purple. And this is from the Pastel Dreams pan set from Art Philosophy. I think I might use this. I don't really know yet. Um, so yeah. And I have two jars of clean water next to me. Good morning, everyone. Hi, Liz. Hi, Linnea. Who here is going to be painting this butterfly with me? Let me know in the chat. Okay. So I'm going to take some of this violet and just put some on my palette. Um, I have been really liking, really liking, um, seeing everyone's butterfly for the butterfly painting challenge. I, I've been really liking seeing your uh, Eastern Tiger Swallowtails. That was the first butterfly of the challenge. So yeah, I've been really liking seeing your guys' butterflies and I can't wait to see um, all the other butterflies you guys paint. Okay, so the purple areas of this butterfly are like right here. So, I think I will use the wet and wet method. So I'm going to wet the um, entire purple areas with this purple here that I have on my palette. And then maybe drop in some like pink in some areas. Linnea says that she She's been doing the butterfly challenge. 
I cannot wait for the next butterfly, which is the crowned hair streak. It is going to be a very fun butterfly to paint. Okay. So yeah, right now I'm using my size eight round brush and painting in the purple areas. I'm not getting um, too worried about painting outside of the of my outline here because all of this around the purple areas will be painted black. So I'm not too worried about making it perfect. So what are your plans for um, today, for this Friday? I, I hope to maybe work in my garden a little bit this evening, but I don't really know. Um, I might not. It's kind of cold today. And I might do some painting later this evening, maybe. <laughs> Okay, and now I'm going to drop in a little bit of pink. So I have this, this pink. Um, I forget what it's called, but it's from the Pastel Dreams pan set. I'm just going to drop some in. Maybe drop in a little bit more purple. So today we have a like goal of 35 likes. Um, so if you haven't liked this video yet, feel free to like it. It'll help um, it, it'll help people find my, my video on YouTube. And if we reach 35 likes, I will show you a treasured family photo of mine. And it is probably also the, the funniest family photo I have. <laughs> so if we reach 35 likes, I will show you that photo. Okay, now we're going to do the same thing on this wing here. Joy says, I, I work until 5 p.m. today, so I am hoping to paint this evening and this weekend. Nice. Um, so are, Joyce, are you doing the butterfly painting challenge or are you going to work on other things? I kind of wish I painted inside the lines. If I could go back, I think I would try to just paint inside these lines because I know that when I go back in with black to paint around, um, I don't know. I just feel like it, it'd be easier just to paint right inside of the lines to like from the start.
Galetta says, today I'm going to try to finish the butterfly from day six and seven. Oh, from, from, from May six and seven, which is the Eastern Tiger Swallowtail, which is the first butterfly. And, and she says that she, she didn't have time. Um, and then she, she says, start the new one and do more university work. So, um, I can't remember if I asked you this, but what are you studying at, at, at the university? Okay, now I'm going to drop in some of this pink color. And I think I'm going to add a bit more purple. Okay. Joy says, I am doing the butterfly challenge. Desiree says that she is painting the butterfly too. Hey. And Gal Galetta says that she is studying to be a teacher. Awesome. Um, my sister, she's a teacher. She's a uh, middle school, I think, geography and social studies teacher. Okay, so we need to wait until the purple is dry to paint with black, like around... Um, so let's go ahead and start working on the other areas of this butterfly. So I, I'm looking at some photos on Google and it looks like this butterfly is has like a lot of gray like around the um, body and at the base of the wings. So, going to take some gray. So this gray right here, this is from the Classics pan set from Art Philosophy. So I'm just putting some of this gray on my palette. And I think I might add a touch of purple to it. Okay, that's a little too much. <laughs> Joy says the first butterfly is very detailed. Um, I I had trouble sketching it out. I'm looking forward to painting this butterfly. It's not as involved. <laughs> yeah, um, that's kind of why I chose this butterfly for the live video today. Like I, I chose to have it be on a Friday because um, if the swallowtail was was for Friday, like for the live video, I feel like it would be a three hour or four hour tutorial because it's so um, detailed. It took me, I think it took me about three and a half hours to paint. Okay, so let's start with the body of this butterfly. So I'm just taking this gray And I, I want this to be fairly light. I don't want it to be too dark. I want to start out light and then add in some darker grays. Okay, and then I'm going to drop in 
a dark gray. So I'm going to take some black here and just put it right here on my palette. And I still have some gray in my brush. And I'm just going to drop some in. Okay, now I'm cleaning my brush. I'm going to um, just drag this gray around to some areas, kind of blend it a little bit. Okay. Um, I think this is good to start. I'll let that layer dry and then we'll add some more detail to it. Sunny says, I'm doing the challenge. Yay. Glenna says, oh, what a coincidence. I'm studying to be an early years teacher specifically. So um, are you are you going to teach like a certain subject or are you going to teach like all of the subjects? Um, Allison says, I'm doing the challenge too. This is my first challenge and my first chat. That's awesome. I'm, I'm so glad that you decided to do the challenge and that you're here with us hanging out. Okay, I'm taking some of this gray that I used um, and um, okay I'm looking at a photo of this butterfly and I don't I don't know if this is a he or she but I'm just gonna say she she has a lot of like little tiny specks so I think I'm just going to start with a very light gray and then when, when we're ready, later on, we will add some of the tiny specks. So it's, she, she's light gray here and then further up, she becomes like darker and then eventually black. Now I'm cleaning my brush and I have a little bit of clean water and I'm just blending this gray out a little bit. And now I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Now I'm cleaning my brush again and just blending this gray. Hi Ashton. Ashton says, I'll be teaching middle school art next year. It's my first year teaching. Oh my goodness, that's awesome. Um, wow. Congrats on, on your first year of teaching next year. Are you nervous about it or are you just mostly excited? Okay, so I, I'm, I mixed um, more gray with a little bit of purple. 
and I'm going to add this around the um, base of every wing. Mostly this area and then the very bottom base of these two wings here, I, I'm, I'm not going to add this because in the photo I'm looking at, it looks like it's a little lighter down here. So now I'm blending with some clean water. Okay. This butterfly is kind of challenging actually because it's white. Like a lot of it's white and it's kind of hard to paint white, white things. <laughs> if you know what I mean, because it's not exactly white. Um, like there's some grays and maybe some purples, browns. I'm also going to add some of this gray, um, like here on each wing to create kind of like a shadow. And I'm blending with some clean water. Okay, so my purple is fairly dry. So now I will start adding in the black. How are you guys doing on this butterfly? Those of you who are painting it with me. Glenna says, so cool, Ashton. Next year will be also my first year teaching. Wow, you guys, that's awesome. Desiree says, I like blues and purples to shade white objects. Good, good idea. Yeah, um, especially for this butterfly, like for shading. That's kind of why I added a little bit of purple into my gray. So it's, it's like a purple gray to shade. And then she says, I am. I might be crazy that I am painting both the female, the, the male and female of this butterfly and the orange tip. <laughs> so is, is, the, is this the female one, Desiree, or is this the male? And how, how are they different? I, I guess I can Google this, but I'm just curious. All right, so let's add some black. I'm going to use my size four round brush. And I, I'm going to use black here. This is from Windsor Newton, their professional pan set. I'm just putting some on my palette. Desiree says that the female has orange. Oh, okay, so the orange tip is the female and the purple tip is the male. Is that right? <laughs> Am I getting this? And Ashton says to Galetta, thanks, congrats to you too.
Okay. So for all of these butterflies for the butterfly painting challenge, I am painting them all eight by eight inches, like my, my paper. I recently bought a eight by eight, well, te technically it's 7.9 by 7.9 arches watercolor block and it's it's been really fun to paint that size I, I really like painting square and I bought it for this challenge have you guys been painting your butterflies like on a square sheet of paper or do you prefer like um another size Okay, so I'm trying to use the very tip of my round brush in between these orange areas. <laughs> I might have to use a smaller brush. Okay, I have my size zero round brush This part is kind of tedious. <laughs> okay. Now I'm taking my other brush. And the black area kind of stops like here. And then at the very edge of this wing, it trails that the black area trails along maybe until there about there okay now i'm taking my smaller brush <laughs> I think that's fine. I might have to touch up a little bit um, later. By the way, um, I know we've talked about this the last few lives, but Desiree and I created an artist, a nature artist Facebook group, and I linked it in the description of this video um, for you. In case any of you are interested in joining. We're um, hoping to grow it, keep growing it, and connecting with other artists who like painting nature.
Okay, I'm going to read some of your comments. Oh, De Desiree says the orange tip is a different species. Okay. Um, it's, it's the one we have here in the Netherlands. Oh, and then she, she says the female of this type of butterfly, the purple tip, has orange tips. Okay. Um, yeah, it is confusing. <laughs> so the, or, the purple areas... Um, instead it's orange, but it's not caught in, it's not called an orange tip butterfly. Oh wait, hold on, hold on. I have my, my butterfly book open. So, is this, is this here, the female, like it has some orange. So may, maybe this is the female then. Okay. Hi, Ingrid. How are you today? Are you painting a butterfly with us? Galetta says, I'm painting them in a square sketchbook. Nice. The, sketch, the sketchbook is my insect nature journal. And I paint the insect and put some notes of the species. I love that idea. That is so cool. So is the sketchbook made up of watercolor paper? I have a square, like a little square sketchbook, but the paper isn't that great for watercolors, so I never use it. Patricia says, hi, Allison. Hi, Patricia. <laughs> and she, she, she says, so happy I made it to the live. The butterfly is looking beautiful so far. I can't wait. I, I can't paint with you today, but I'll listen to you while I do some work. Yay. Well, I'm glad that, that you can hang out with us. Even though you can't paint. Do you think you'll um, paint later? Like paint this butterfly later? Okay. Desiree says, I've been looking at the et Etcher sketchbooks. Ooh, maybe I'll look those up. Etcher sketchbooks. Are those on Amazon? Ingrid says, no, I'm painting a mouth instead. Oh, so are you, so you, you like to paint portraits? I am not good at painting portraits or like people, but I haven't really practiced people very much.
I should show you guys sometime um, the portraits I've painted. <laughs> I haven't really shown anyone except Jimmy. I think Jimmy has seen them. Maybe that will be a like goal. Um, one of these lives. So yeah, if you're just joining, we have a like goal today of 35 likes. So if we get to 35 likes, I will show you a family photo of mine. It's, it's one of my most treasured family photos. And it's so funny. It's like, it makes me laugh every time I see it. Okay. I don't really want to paint the the lines yet, like the veins. I want to kind of do that last. But I'll kind of paint about where they will start. Desiree says that she has seen those sketchbooks on Jackson's and they ship worldwide. And Ashton says to Allison, I want one of those sketchbooks so bad. Man, you guys are like making me want them too. <laughs> I don't even use my sketchbook very much. It's so sad. I need to use it more. Okay, all right, so we'll now move on to this wing up here. This one says, yeah, that's, that's why they tempt me. The cotton paper is not seen much in sketchbooks. Yeah, um, the sketchbook I bought for watercolor, I... I bought it on Etsy. It's like a handmade sketchbook and it has cotton watercolor paper and that's that's why I bought it because I couldn't find a sketchbook that has like good quality paper for watercolor. Allison says there's also a cotton sketchbook producer on eBay that uses Fabriano and Arches paper. Coletta says, it is the first sketchbook I bought and I didn't know about Grammage, but as I am starting with art, I don't have a lot of money I'm going, I'm going with. I, I used it to enjoy and practice. Ingrid says, I'm doing a course of realistic portraits and colored pencil. Good for you, that's awesome. I, I haven't used colored pencil very much. I have some, I have some, um, gosh, what are they called? What are they called? They, it starts with a P. <laughs> like the, the really nice colored pencils. Have, has any, have any of you ever used colored pencil with watercolor? That's kind of why I wanted to get some colored pencils because um, I want to 
wanted to try them with watercolor, but I haven't really done that very much. Only a few times I've used colored pencil with watercolor. Desiree says, I love painting and sketchbooks. Low pressure, just trying out stuff. Gladys says, what's the name of that sketchbook? Um, and Desiree says, the arches paper, I love painting on it, but it gives me gray hairs. <laughs> oh, I know how that is. It's so intimidating to use arches paper because it's so expensive. Okay, as I'm painting this wing, I am really trying to make it symmetrical to this wing. So I'm looking back and forth, trying to see um, where I should paint black. So this little purple area is a little bit more is like tinier than this one. Oh, yes. Um, yeah. Prismacolor, Galetta. You're right. That is the brand of water, of <laughs> colored pencils that I have. I don't know why I couldn't think of the name. Okay. Desiree says, oh, I love colored pencil, but my hands can't handle them anymore. Is it because, like, shaking? Or, I guess I, I don't really know what, what you mean. Um, Sandy says, I use Prisma or Faber Castell on watercolor portraits when I do them or to add a unique texture to a painting after it's done. So how is the weather where you guys live? 
today is kind of cold. It's like, I think going to be in the 40s, like upper 40 Fahrenheit and windy. I think today's going to be windy, but it's sunny, so that's nice. Patricia says, a storm has just started here. I'm in Spain. It's so loud, but I'm happy to be inside warm and watching you paint. <laughs> Cindy says, it's cold here, but at least it's finally stopped raining. We had some flurries this morning, though. Oh, man. If I saw snow today, oh my gosh, I would be so disappointed. Okay, reading some comments. Desiree says, oh, she, I, I get really bad cramps in my hands with colored pencils because of my illness. It's too bad because I love using them. Aw, I'm so sorry. Allison says, well, I will send you a perfect sketchbook and maybe you can tell everyone what you think to help them decide if they want to make the purchase. Wow, that's so nice of you. Yeah, I would love that. Galetta says, here in Barcelona feels like summer. Oh, I can't wait for summer. But then I say that and the summer arrives and I'm like miserable <laughs> because it's so hot. I would say summer might be my least favorite um, season. Like, I, I really like summer. I do, but it's, it just gets so hot. And the bugs are awful, at least where I live. Like, mosquitoes. I, I can't even, like, enjoy being outside sometimes because they just swarm everywhere. Thank you, Allison. I appreciate that. Ashton says, it's windy and cold here in Missouri. So thankful. I haven't planted anything in my garden yet because we're under a freeze warning for tonight. Yeah, I haven't planted anything yet. Um, it's still, we, we still get some freezes. <laughs> Plus, I, I'm putting up a fence. Well, actually, Jimmy is probably doing that. But we're, we're putting up a fence in my garden, like around my garden, this weekend. Because we have rabbits. And I used to have a fence around my garden, but it, like, fell apart. And so last year, I didn't have a fence, and the bunnies, like, ate everything. So this year, I should probably put up a fence. <laughs> Ashton 
Desiree says the same. Only thing that's good about summer is all the insects and flowers to look at. <laughs> I agree with that. I totally agree. It is, it is really nice to like see all of the beautiful insects and um, flowers. It's just so hot. And I really dislike mosquitoes. And I, I don't like wearing shorts. So I like still wear pants in the summer. And it just gets so hot. All right. Gonna read some more of your comments. Sydney says, I live in Canada and I've experienced every season in the past week. <laughs> that is too funny. I'm sorry about that. Desiree says, it's already hot now today over here. Sudden, sudden weather shifts are the worst. Ashton says, I love summer, but I hate the bugs too. I live in a super small town surrounded by crop fields. So June bugs, mosquitoes, Japanese beetles, if you want any, we are willing to share. <laughs> so funny. Yeah, I... I I live in a town like that too. In Indiana, I live like in a tiny town surrounded by like cornfields. <laughs> oh, it looks like Galetta and Patricia are um, both live around the same area in Spain or something like that. That's cool, guys. Desiree says, I'm allergic to mosquitoes. Oh, man. That's awful. If I get stung a spot, that's about 2 to 15 centimeters, swells up, and gets red and super itchy. Oh, jeez. Hi, Nicole. How are you doing? Thank you. She, she says, the butterfly is looking pretty. Thank you. Will you be painting a butterfly with us? Sarah says, your butterfly is looking great. Thank you. Okay, so I think now we need to kind of add more detail. Um, oh, wait. We have some black to paint on the bottom wings, too. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, so I'm going to use my, probably my really teeny tiny size zero round brush. Okay, and I'm just, at least the photos I'm looking at on Google, it looks like there's some black around the edge of these bottom wings. Hi, Claire. I'm so glad you can join. Thank you. I hope you're doing well. Hi, Azura Fantasy Lab. How are you doing? I'm glad that you are finding this relaxing.
Claire, Claire says, and I'm not at the end. That's funny. Yeah, the, the last few lives, she's, she's made it here, but it was like towards the end of every one of them. <laughs> So, oh, by the way, I'm currently starting to work on my next watercolor course, which is butterflies. So, for this challenge, I am filming, at least besides the live tutorials, like today, um, all the other butterflies besides those live tutorials, I'm filming for my course. Um... So that's exciting. I have been looking forward to this for months. Like putting together a butterfly, a watercolor butterfly course. Okay, now I'm going to paint on this wing here. And then we will go back in and add a bunch more detail, especially around the black areas and like touch them up and stuff. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's where he says, you are on fire with all the tutorials. Thank you. Claire says, I can't wait to start the course, yay. Allison says, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I was hoping for a butterfly course. I'm in. Yay. Galetta says, oh my gosh, I love the idea of a butterfly course. <laughs> Thank you, guys. I'm so excited. So, so excited. I've been wanting to, to do this course since, like, last October. But I really felt like I should do, like, a beginner course first and then um, other courses like the butterfly course yeah and then I hope my, my goal is to also make a moth course so like painting a luna moth and a an atlas moth, cecropia Cic moth, um, a bunch of other beautiful moths. Allison says, a moth course sounds awesome. Thank you. I'm excited for that one too. Okay. Desiree says, oh, are we going to have a moth challenge then too? <laughs> Maybe. I haven't thought that far. But yeah, that, that'd be a lot of fun. Okay, so trying to figure out what we should do next. 
for this butterfly. I think, I think we should finish up the body um, first and then add some more like color, color to the wings. Okay, so I am taking my size four round brush and taking some black. And maybe I'll add like just a touch of purple to it. Okay. Um I don't want to paint this dark color everywhere. I I want some of the light color to show. Okay, now I'm cleaning my brush and I'm going to blend with some clean water. Wiping some away, like in the middle. Oh wait, not, I, I, I don't wanna do that. It looks like he's, at least from some of the photos I see, he's darker in the middle. And then lighter. Here, so I'm going to drag some off. A little bit. Okay. Going to add some more black down here. And then some in the middle. Drag some of this off. Okay. Um, Claire says, I know I am late, but what paints are you using? I am using the, um, I'm using Windsor Newton Professional Pan Set for the black and this quinacodone violet and i'm using gray here from the classics pan set from art philosophy and i used some pink too like in the purple and it's from um pastel dreams pan set this like vibrant pink 
And I also used a little bit of this white. I think it's called Chinese white from Windsor Newton. Sarah says, just washing for today. Awesome. I think I might paint his little eyes. So I'm taking some black with my really teeny tiny size zero round brush. Okay, I need to make sure this is dry before I rest my hand. <laughs> to I'm going to add some more purple right here because if I feel like this purple here is lighter than this side so I'm taking my violet and I'm just going to paint that on And I also want to add some of this pink. Claire says, thank you. You're welcome. Hi, Loki. How are you doing? How's it going? Are you painting a butterfly with us? Okay. Um, so let's add some more color to his wings. I know he is white, but I just feel like it needs more. It needs something. Um, so I have Chinese white. I had some here. Um, and then my gray kind of like flowed, flowed, is that a word? Flowed into my white. Um, And I'm going to take just a teeny tiny bit of this violet. Okay. All right, I'm going to add some in some areas like here. This is kind of difficult. <laughs> um, painting like a white butterfly. Anyone else have trouble? Um, 
Desiree says she's painting so slow. That's okay. Um, this is, it's good that this video will always be on my YouTube channel. It doesn't disappear, so you can always come back later and pause it if you need to. Oops, I added way too much purple. Too much purple. <laughs> there. Okay. So I'm basically just using this mixture of purple and Chinese white and painting a lot of the wings, but I'm also leaving some of the white from the paper for like highlights. Claire says, this is hard, but you are so good at it. <laughs> Thank you. It is challenging. I thought this butterfly would be easier, but it's proving to be not as easy as I thought. Okay, I'm going to mix more. Okay. Hi Heidi, how are you? She says, hi Allison, coming in a little late. Did you begin with the Chinese white paint on the butterfly wings and did you trace the veins in the butterfly with gray or are those your pencil lines? So yes, I, I traced um, my outline onto my watercolor paper and it's, it's with pencil, the, the veins are with pencil um, and let me see, what, what, what was your other question? Do you begin with the Chinese white? No, um, I, I first began with the purple and then the black. And then now, just now I started using the Chinese white. I hope that answered your question. Okay. I'm also filming on my DSLR some, um, some of the time and my battery died so I'm changing the battery real, real quick. Alright, 
All right, so um, we just have basically the details left of this butterfly. Those of you who are painting the butterfly with me, um, how are you doing? Where, where are you at? Are you ready for the details? Okay, so let's start. Um, on this upper wing here. Claire says, it looks like it is going to pop off the page and fly away. <laughs> thank you. Heidi says, yes, thank you. The white was just the paper and I'm doing well. Good. Desiree says, I'm having a quick dinner break. Awesome. Uh, Heidi says, I'm still on the swallowtail. One butterfly behind. That's okay. All right. I am taking some black. I'm just adding some on my palette with some water. And I'm using my teeny tiny size zero round brush. Sydney says, I'm ready for a detail. I'm doing okay so far. Good. Okay, let's add the detail. So I'm looking at some photos and in my butterfly book. Okay. Making sure this is dry. It's not really dry yet. So I better be careful. <laughs> I'm going to start by adding some really teeny tiny dots, like specks. So right here on each wing right here, there's like a lot of teeny tiny specks. I might also mix a little bit of the Chinese white in this black so that the black isn't so like dark. You know what I mean? <laughs> okay. requires a lot of concentration. <laughs> and then on the outside of all this black, there are some specks too.
Spencer says the swallowtail was a lot of work. <laughs> yeah, it has a lot of detail, doesn't it? Okay, I'm going to take a quick minute break and show you my swallowtail. In case you guys haven't seen it yet. So this is from the first butterfly of the butterfly painting challenge. And if this is the first time you've been learning about this butterfly challenge, I linked about the challenge in the description of this video. If you want to see like the prompt list. So here's mine. And then this is butterfly two. So it just started. And I'm, I'm really excited about this challenge. And we've had a lot of entries so far. A lot of you have um, started. A lot of you are participating. So it, it just makes me so happy <clears throat> that you guys are liking this challenge so far. Okay, so a lot of these dots are also gray. So I'm taking some gray. And this is actually Chinese white with some black. <laughs> okay. says, yeah, so Swallowtail has a lot of details taking my time. It's my first water, it's, it's my first watercolor painting. Wow, that's awesome, Heidi. Um, Cindy says, the Swallowtail took a lot of time for me, but I'm happy with how it turned out. Good. Liz says, I'm finished. I really like, I really liked this purple tip. I painted it on a whitish gray, two inch rock, and acrylics. Oh, wow, that's awesome. Um, and then she, she says that it turned out really nice. Thanks, Allison. You're welcome. I'm so glad that you, um, may, maybe I'll, I'll see yours on Instagram. Um, if, if you tag me and use the hashtag for the challenge, I, I would love to see your rock painting. Hi, Jessa. So glad you can join. Um, Heidi says, does anyone have a link to a good reference photo for the purple wing butterfly, for, for this butterfly? I, I did link a link in the description to Google, like, um, to, to various Google photos of this butterfly. So may maybe that'll help. Okay, I think I might start painting in advance and then continue on with the little specks. I think that'll be best maybe to just paint in the veins first. So I have this gray. I'm going to start with gray. Um, Oh, this is probably like the most stressful part of this painting is the veins. At least for me, they're like pretty intimidating. Mm. 
I'll probably go over um, some of this gray with black, making some areas of the beans. Drawing out the veins first with pencil really, really helps with this. Now I'm going to paint the edge of the wing with some gray. I'm going to go ahead and paint the veins on this wing here. And then when I'm done with these two wings, like with all the detail and stuff, I'll move on to these because I'm right-handed. Um, because I, I don't want to, like, accidentally, like, smear paint if I'm, like, working from this wing and then this wing and then this wing. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> and then there's, like, a little spot here. I'm painting with some gray. Ashton says, I always feel like I have to hold my breath when I paint the veins because I'm so scared I'll mess it up. Oh my goodness. I to totally relate to that. Yeah, so a lot of these veins are very light, like a very light gray, at least from the photos I, I see. Okay. So I painted in the veins. I will go back over some of them and like darken the veins that are like the, the areas that are um, closest to the black. Because at, at least from the photos I see, the veins are like dark and then they lighten up um, the closer they... <laughs> get to the base of the wing. I hope that makes sense. Okay, now I'm just grabbing some more gray. I'm 
and I'm going to start to, to finish up these little specks. It looks like the little specks are more gray um, around here and then they're more black up here. So since I have gray on my brush, I'm just going to paint the specks over here first. And they kind of trail down here. Okay. Now I'm taking some black. So what butterflies are you guys looking forward to to paint for this challenge? I'm, lo I'm really looking forward to painting the last one, which is the Indian leaf butterfly. Um, I actually have a little paper butterfly of, of that. I had it taped onto one of my drawers in, in my art room here. So this is um, <laughs> the Indian leaf butterfly. It's, I bought this from Moth and Myth. They make like little tiny or little um, paper butterflies. Yeah, so I'm really looking forward to painting this one. And the, uh, I think it's called M Mother of Pearl Butterfly. I'm excited for that one too.
Okay, now I'm going to darken some areas of these scenes. Okay, now I'm cleaning my brush. I have a little bit of clean water in it and I'm just kind of blending this out. There. Heidi says, we are all quiet to let you concentrate on those tiny details. Oh, you guys still have to be quiet. You can still chat. <laughs> I really love the details in art and enjoy watching artists adding details. Justin says, wow, it's so pretty. Desiree says, that's a hard choice. <laughs> Okay, now I'm going to move on to this wing here. This is, this is probably my f favorite part of painting. Is adding all of the tiny details because it really makes the painting come together. I just, I love it. Okay. All right. Um there is some It looks like from some photos I see that there are some like little dots like really light gray. So maybe I'll add some of those in. Here. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and add some gray. Around 
here. And there's like a, like a little, maybe a little shadow here. And I'm grabbing some dark gray. I'm adding some um, right under this top wing. I'm blending with clean water. I think now I'm going to move on to these wings. Taking some black. Oh wait, I want to first paint in the veins. So I'm taking gray. Heidi says, that's so pretty. There are so many great butterflies that you selected for this challenge. Some of them I've never heard of. When researching for photos, the number of butterfly species is incredible. I know, there are so many. There are so many beautiful butterflies. Yeah, I've, I've never heard of a lot of the ones I chose. I, um... I just went through my butterfly books and bookmarked the ones that stood out to me. Okay, I'm gonna fade these veins out a little bit with some clean water in my brush. So next Friday's live tutorial will also be for this challenge, a butterfly for, for this challenge. And actually, I think the next three lives will be. So you can expect um, every Friday for the next three weeks that we will be painting a butterfly for this challenge. I can't remember the one for next Friday. Um, I don't remember what the one that is.
Okay, I'm taking my brush with some clean water and I'm fading out this vein. Okay. All right, now I'm taking some more gray. Um, I, I like using this white. I don't use it very much, but I've been really liking it. It creates like um, pastel y colors. Okay. Now I'm going to add the um, little specks around here. And I'm trying to make this, like this side symmetrical to this one. Yeah, I do want to add like a shadow here with some gray. And I'm blending with some clean water in my brush. And like a little shadow here. Okay. Desiree says, one day I want to start a project and paint all Dutch butterflies. Ooh. Gladys says to Desiree, I love that project. <laughs> that would be so cool. Heidi says, the crowned hair streak, American Painted Lady, and the Miami Blue are the next three butterflies in the challenge if anyone is interested. Thanks, Heidi. Yeah, um, I cannot wait to paint those. That reminds me, I think the Miami Blue is what will be for next Friday's live tutorial. I, I think that's the one that we will be doing live together next Friday. Okay, now I'm going to grab some black. Hmm. 
And I'm going to start painting in the black specks. I'm going to make some of these darker down here. Okay. Kind of add some more depth. I kind of feel like it's looking a little flat in this area. Okay. Desert says that she had trouble finding pictures of the Miami blue butterfly. Okay. Yeah, hopefully I, I can find some for you guys. And I'll, I'll link them in the tutorial for next Friday. I would show you the photo in my book. I just don't know, like, with copyright. I, I know, like, I can't... I can't like scan it for like in my book. I can't scan it for you. Um, yeah. Okay, um, I'm going to fade this out a little bit, this black. Yeah, I do want to darken some of these veins right here. So I'm just using some clean water in my brush and I'm fading this slightly. Okay. If you're having trouble, um, like trying to make your butterfly symmetrical or like trying to figure out what, like what else you, like what, what you need to change to make it more symmetrical looking, you can always take a photo of your butterfly and just simply taking a photo and looking at that photo on your phone will help, like, will help you look at your butterfly from another perspective. And then you can also flip the photo horizontally or vertically or both and that'll help you also, like, See your butterfly from another perspective and see like oh yeah I need to fix this to make it look more symmetrical or um, yeah <laughs> that usually helps me um, 
see my painting with fresh eyes. Now I'm painting with light, with, with uh, gray here. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna darken these veins down here then fade them out Desiree says okay painted in the veins I am convinced I'm gonna be full on gray by the end of the challenge. Ashton says, my drawing and painting professors in school also taught us to turn our paper or canvas. I think it's good to like do that consistently as you work on something. Or, or simply also just like stepping away and looking at it from a distance that helps too. Okay, we're almost there, guys. We're almost done. I still need to work on this area more. It just looks, it doesn't look finished yet to me. I'm just kind of touching up this edge here.
Okay. I am taking a little bit of gray and I'm going to paint bit of some gray on the edge of this wing. And up here. And going to add some of these gray dots. Try my best to make it as symmetrical as possible. <laughs> guys doing oh sorry about that guys <laughs> sorry about that how are you guys doing <laughs> my battery okay I'm back I'm sorry guys sorry <laughs> Um, I don't know how much you missed, but I added in the little, the uh, light gray dots. Um, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Okay, we are almost done. Um, I, I need to work on the body and also the antennas. Let's go ahead and paint in the antennas. I'm first going to start with gray because paint, painting the antennas is like, just like the veins, it's very intimidating. And so I like to start with a light gray. Um, Desiree says, I'm, I'm gonna need another hour for the butterfly and then the female one. Heidi says, I thought it was my battery on my phone. <laughs> yeah, my my battery it was low, and so my my phone like notified me, um, like like a little window popped up, and so it kind of froze up the live video. And yeah, I was busy painting; I didn't even notice. <laughs> Joyce says beautiful. Sarah says, butterfly looks beautiful. Thank you guys. Okay, I'm going to start this one. I'm gonna start at the top edge or the top of the antenna. Okay, and Anyone else find antennas intimidating, just like the veins? <laughs> okay, there's that one.
Okay. There. There we go. Desiree says, oh yeah, everything that needs to be a fine line, yes. And she says, just like the whiskers on cats. Oh yeah, I totally, totally agree with that. Okay, um, I'm going to try to find some photos of this butterfly. I want to make the, like his body area <laughs> better, like more realistic. I think I need to darken up a little bit. I, I need to darken up some areas. Okay, I'm taking some black on my palette with a lot of water. Okay, um, I'm just going to I'm going to be the edge of him dark. And kind of create like a shadow around him just to give more depth in this area. I might have to repeat in some of the specs. I'm taking some more black. Okay. I'm going to let this dry and then I'll add some detail. Okay, what else? <laughs> okay, I might also add um, a little bit of white gouache too. Gladys says, every fine line is for me and more when I'm almost done. Like is, um, is stressful like I like to paint the fine lines Heidi says so beautiful and delicate perfection <laughs> thank you guys hi Amy thanks um Heidi also says shadowing really made its body come forward yes I I just I kind of felt like it needed something so I think I think that was it Okay. 
It's still a little wet, but I'm just going to go ahead and paint in some details. I'm taking some black and I'm using my teeny tiny size zero round brush. I'm repainting in some of the shadow here under the wing. And I'm going to paint in some furry texture with black. Okay, now I'm cleaning my brush and I'm just, okay, I'm taking my other brush here, it's size four. It's clean, it has some clean water in it. So I'm leaving some light areas here and there. Trying to create some furriness. Desiree says, it looks really beautiful. Thanks. Allison says, which book is that? I would like to purchase a copy. It is this book here. It's by Sally Morgan. And I totally recommend it. I love it so much. And yeah, you can see all of my bookmarks here. These are all of the butterflies for the challenge that I bookmarked. <laughs> okay, I'm going to take some white gouache. This is Windsor Newton Designer Gouache Permanent White. And I am also going to take my um, Filbert Greener brush. This is great for like fur or like grass. And I'm just going to put some of this gouache on my palette here, just like a teeny, teeny, tiny bit, right here. And I'm wetting my, my brush slightly in my water and Taking some of this gouache. And I'm gonna paint in some furs. Okay, I need some more water. It's not applying to the um Painting very well, so I need some more water. I find that um, if I add 
like a good amount of water to this. At first it looked very white and then as it dries it um, it's not as white. Okay, I don't know about this. <laughs> I don't know. Now I'm taking my really teeny tiny size zero round brush and I'm just moving this squash around a little bit. I'm not sure how I feel about it. This is the thing about live video. You see me <laughs> trying something and it not quite work out the way I thought. <laughs> okay. Oh my goodness. I don't like this. Now I'm just trying to wipe it wipe it off. <laughs> okay. I'm going to load my brush with some black and gray, it's so like a dark gray. Okay. Alright, I should just stop before I mess this up. <laughs> um, Sydney says, it's looking really good. I can't wait to see everyone's butterflies. I am so looking forward to seeing your, your guys' purple tip. All right, um, I'm taking some black. I'm trying to fix this a little bit. Add some more shadow. Okay, I think I'm done. Actually, wait, I want to add some more little specks. As I'm finishing up this butterfly, I'm just trying to make sure that it, it looks symmetrical and try to see what else I should add here and there.
Allison says, everyone hit that like button, please. Thank you, Allison. Yeah, I don't think we'll hit our like goal today, which is 35, which is okay. I I increased the goal from last week. Well, last week was 30. So I think next Friday, I'll go back down to 30. Um, okay. Joy says, nice recovery. It just shows your skill. It looks great. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with this. Pretty happy with this butterfly. I, I guess I'm not too happy with the body. I feel like I, I could probably um, improve it a little bit later. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just kind of tired. Um, I'm just kind of tired. Going live tires me out. But it's so worth it. It's so worth going live. I, I really enjoy hanging out with you guys, um, chatting with you. It, it really brightens up my day. I, I'm just so, so thankful for all of you who um, watch my live videos and paint with me. Um, so I'm going to give you a closer look. And here's my desk. And I have you, you guys, the chat. Okay, I'm going to turn my camera around now and say goodbye to you. guys thank you so much for watching this live video hanging out with me um i can't wait to see your uh purple tip butterfly and all of your butterflies that that you paint for this challenge um i hope that you are enjoying the challenge and you're enjoying painting butterflies hi joyce she says see you next video goodbye take care Take care. I um, hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. Um, hi, Heidi. You're welcome. I'm glad you guys liked the tutorial. Um, it was a lot of fun. Thank you, guys. Bye, Desiree. Bye, Sarah. You're welcome. Bye, Glitta. You're welcome, guys. Bye, Sydney. Have a lovely weekend. Bye.